Have you ever wanted to know how fast your Linux system is? Have you ever wanted to benchmark Linux like you can in Windows? Well, it turns out Linux has ways of being benchmarked as well. You could do a more realistic test just like you would in Windows by compiling a large piece of software, unpacking a very large compressed file, or render a video or a 3D image in Blender to see how well your computer handles those heavy workloads. But not everybody has those types of workloads ready to go. So if you just wanted to do a more synthetic benchmark with a benchmarking tool, you can do so with SysBench. Simply install it at the command line, sudo apt install SysBench, and we can run SysBench help to see some of the options that are available in it to us. We can do a file I.O. test, which is pretty much a disk speed test. We can test CPU, memory. We can even specify the number of CPU threads to use to do more of a multi-threaded test and test how well um, multi-thread scales in our applications. So I'm going to go ahead and do a simple CPU test for you guys to show you how that works. So you can see that by default it's using one thread and it's um, using 10,000 as the prime number limit. And then down here we have the results. Um, so of course the average is the average results, probably the most important one that you would want to look at. And we also have the total time. So those are the main things that you would want to compare when you're checking the performance between two different physical machines or two different distros to compare the software and firmware optimizations. Now, like I said, the default prime number is 10,000, but you can specify what integer you want that max prime to be. And it's very useful to increase it for benchmarking a much faster system or a system with a much more powerful CPU, as well as to just see how your CPU handles heavier workloads. So the syntax for that command is done like this. This is making the max prime, um, I think that's either 500,000 or no, that's 5 million. So then you can go ahead and run it just like this. And it's going to take a few more seconds to run because of the much larger number. Um, you could even scale this out to something much, much larger, like you could do it as 5 billion. And that would obviously stretch out that time a lot more. And you'd really get a feel for how much faster one system is compared to another. And by default, the CPU test is only going to use one of your threads. So if you want to specify a higher thread count, like to do four threads instead, you could run that using this syntax here. Then we can also test our memory. So this would be RAM performance by simply replacing CPU with memory in our command syntax. Um, oh, let's see, I gotta put run after it. And this will pretty much run in the same way that the CPU test will. And then you'll see the output in just a moment here that tells you how fast my memory is. And there's a few different options for testing the I.O. in SysBench. So let's do SysBench file I.O. help to see those different options. Uh, it would help if I spelled file, right? So a few different options that are available here. Um, you can do a... Um, you can change the file size, you can change the number of files that you want to create with this. You can also alternate between doing a sequential read or a random read or a sequential write or a random write test. So let's do a quick sequential write test to see how my system does. That'll take a few moments to run. And also, this file I.O. test is a good way to test different file systems in Linux because there's many different file systems that we have available to us. You could do um, like ext4, you can do B btrfs, um, you can do that new one, zfs, so that you can see how those different file systems perform within the same Linux distro, assuming that your particular distro uh, supports all of those. 
Now, it's always good to get a second opinion. Um, so there's another benchmarking tool that we can use called Geekbench. Uh, the only problem with Geekbench though is that it is not something that is open source. So if you're going to be using Geekbench, um, you know, there's no way to really know whether or not the performance for it has been altered in any way for Linux, um, but it is available cross-platform. The Sysbench is available as well, but um, the Sysbench is obviously open source and it's a little bit more complicated to install Sysbench on Windows. So maybe Windows, would, Windows users would not use it as much. Um, I did go ahead and install Geekbench on my system, so I'll show you guys what that looks like. So this is what Geekbench looks like on Linux after you unpack the archive. So you just go ahead and run it, because like I said, it's a binary um, with the dot forward slash Geekbench 5. Now. There's a paid version of Geekbench that you can get and also the free version. Actually, let me just stop this here because I don't actually really want to run this. Um, but you see that the free version or the one that's in tryout mode, it requires an active internet connection and it automatically uploads the test results to the Geekbench browser. So this is something that you may want to just use at your own risk. I mean, I don't really recommend using it anyway. Um, not too worried about the whole like sending results to their server. I mean, it's a little bit spooky, but the main thing that bugs me about this is that it's just not open source. So there's no way to know uh, whether or not the performance on Linux has been rigged um, by a company like Microsoft, because, you know, that's just a conspiracy theory, right? It's not like Microsoft has been known in the past for making the performance of certain applications be much worse on other systems to justify people using Linux more, I mean, to justify people uh, using Microsoft Windows more often. So, Definitely, I recommend uh, Sysbench over Geekbench. But anyway, these are the tools for benchmarking Linux. And I'm going to start using these in my distro tests to see how they stack up against each other. Maybe I'll be able, able to discover the fastest Linux distro. I have some ideas about what it would be on my PC already, but these tests are going to help me figuring out that for sure.